Today, we launch the most ambitious and radical campaign our country has ever seen to bring real change to all parts of this country. If you want to live in a society that works for everybody, not just the billionaires, if you want to save our hospitals, schools and public services from Tory cuts and privatisation, if you want to stop the big polluters destroying our environment, then this election is your chance to vote for it. Yeah. The, choice, the choice could not be clearer. We put our faith in the British people's spirit and commitment to community. It's your country. That's why we stand with you. Labour will put wealth and power in the hands of the many. Boris Johnson's Conservatives, who think they're born to rule, will only ever look after the privileged few. They've slashed taxes for the richest and slashed vital services and support for everyone else. But real change is coming. This election is a once-in-a-generation chance to transform our country, to take on the vested interests that are holding people back and ensure that no community in any part of this country is ever left behind again. Some people, some people believe that real change isn't possible. They say we're asking too much. Really? Really? A health service that people can be proud of, where tens of thousands of cancer patients aren't waiting months for treatment and prescriptions are free throughout the country. Is that asking too much? Is it asking too much to have a social care system that doesn't leave our older people isolated and afraid, but instead gives them dignity with free personal care? Is that asking too much? How about a decent pay rise, a le real living wage of at least 10 pounds an hour, right away, including for young workers from the age of 16. Is that, is that asking too much? Asking too much to secure homes that families can afford, rents that don't break the bank, and an end to the disgrace and indignity of rough sleeping in every city of this country. Is that, is that too much to ask? 30 hours free childcare for all two to four year olds, all children together. A good a good education from cradle to grave as a right, not a privilege. And an end to tuition fees at university. Is that too much? Ending, ending the Conservatives' great rip-off by putting rail, mail and water into public ownership. <laughs> S 
So, <clears throat> those vital services work for everyone, not just Tory donors and shareholders in tax havens. Is that asking too much? No. What about real action on the climate crisis? Yes. By creating hundreds of thousands of new green energy jobs in communities everywhere where they're most desperately needed. I don't, I don't think any of those things are asking too much because we have to radically change course now to avoid living on a hostile and dying planet. This election is our last chance to tackle the climate emergency with a green industrial revolution which is absolutely at the centre and the heart of Labour's plan to transform Britain. Yay. Friends, today is the 31st of October. <laughs> it's all right, I'm just, just passing on information to you at this stage. The day that Boris Johnson promised we would leave the EU, he also said he would rather be dead in a ditch than delay beyond today. But he has failed and that failure is his alone. You can't, you can't trust the word. After three long years of Brexit division and failure from the Tories, we have to get this issue sorted out, as Marsha pointed out. We need to take it out of the hands of politicians and trust the people to have the final say. Labour will get Brexit sorted within six months. We'll let the people decide whether to leave on sensible deal or remain. Yes. It really isn't that complicated. <laughs> and we, a Labour government, will carry out whatever the people decide so we can then get on with delivering the real change that Britain needs after years of conservative cuts to vital services and tax handouts to the richest. <laughs> Labour... <laughs> Labour is determined to bring a divided country together. While the Tories and the Liberal Democrats only seek to divide us further. The Liberal Democrats want to cancel a Democratic vote with a parliamentary stitch-up, and Boris Johnson's planned trade deal with Trump will mean yet more National Health Service money taken away from patients and handed to shareholders. <laughs> Despite his denials, the NHS is up for grabs by US corporations in a one-sided Trump trade sellout. Yeah. Channel 4 dispatches, Channel 4 dispatches revealed this week that the cost of drugs and medicines has repeatedly been discussed between the US and British trade officials. Remember Johnson's famous promise of 350 million a week for the NHS? Well, his toxic Brexit trade deal with Trump could hand over 500 million a week of NHS money to big drug corporations in America and around the world. We will stop them. Labour won't let Donald Trump get his hands on our National Health Service. <laughs>
NHS, our NHS, created by our communities and brave people that campaigned in centres like this to get an NHS, I simply say quite bluntly to everyone, it's not for sale. <laughs> I think we're all agreed on that. That's so loud, that'll be heard everywhere. Thank you. Johnson's sellout deal would lead to years of continuing negotiations and uncertainty. Labour will get Brexit sorted by giving the people the final say in six months. Britain needs to get beyond Brexit and, a deal, and deal with the damage done to our communities by a decade of Tory cuts and economic failure. I travel all around the country all the time. I meet hundreds of people in different circumstances, schools, colleges, factories, offices, community centres, health centres, lots of places. I meet people from all walks of life and I listen to them. I listen to them all the time. That's what our party is about, listening to people. And that is what I learn from them. You don't see politics like the media and political classes do. After a decade when real wages have fallen, for too many people, what they see is the community they love and love living in being run down through years of deliberate neglect. The evidence of a decade of economic vandalism is all around them. It's there. In the high streets, in small towns, with boarded up shops. It's there, in the closed library and swimming pool. The youth centres that close their doors. The high streets that are like a ghost town. The elderly couple who are scared to walk down their road because violent crime has doubled. The army veteran sleeping under blankets in a doorway. People struggling to make ends meet. The mother and her children eating from a food bank because they've been forced onto universal credit. That's the evidence of conservative cuts. Well, I say no more. <laughs> It will be Labour that will end the damaging Tory austerity and a Labour government that will scrap universal credit. <laughs> we will tear down the barriers to success that the Conservatives have put in people's way. We will invest in every nation and region, rebuild our public services and give our NHS, our schools and the police the money they need by taxing those at the top properly to fund services for everyone else. We will give people back their pride in their communities and give everybody the quality of life that they deserve. And by everybody, I mean everybody. <clears throat> the, prime... <clears throat> the Prime Minister wants you to believe that we're having this election because Brexit is being blocked by an establishment elite. He's a man of much imagination. Um, <laughs> people aren't fooled so easily. They know the Conservatives are the establishment elite. 
And you know what? <clears throat> and you know what really scares the elite? All of us, the people of this country. What the elite are actually afraid of is paying their taxes. <laughs> so, in this election, I think they're going to fight harder and dirtier than ever before. <laughs> They'll throw everything at us because they know we are not afraid to take them on. <laughs> so, we are going after the tax dodgers, we're going after the dodgy landlords, we're going after the bad bosses, we're going after the big polluters because we know whose side we, the Labour Party, are on. <laughs> and the big question in this election is, whose side are you on? Are you on the side? Are you on the side of the tax dodgers who are taking us all for a ride? People who think it's OK to rip people off? and hide their money in tax havens so they can have a super new yacht? Or are you on the side of the children with special education needs who aren't getting the support they deserve because of Tory and Lib Dem government cuts? Whose side are you on? The dodgy landlords like the Duke of Westminster, Britain's youngest billionaire who tried to evict whole blocks of flats where families live to make way for luxury apartments, or the millions of tenants in Britain who struggle to pay their rent each month. Whose side are you on? The, the bad bosses like Mike Ashley, the billionaire who won't pay his staff properly and is even running Newcastle United into the ground, or his exploited workforce like the woman who was reportedly forced to give birth in a warehouse toilet because she was terrified of missing her shift. Whose side are you on? The big polluters like Jim Radcliffe, making Britain's richest man who makes his money by polluting the environment, or the children growing up in our cities with reduced lung capacity because of choking pollution. Whose side are you on? The greedy bankers like Chris... Crispin Odie, who makes millions betting against our country, and to show his generosity, has donated huge sums of money to Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party. <laughs> or are you on the side of working people who create the wealth that's then squirreled away into those tax havens? And whose side are you on? The billionaire media barons like Rupert Murdoch, whose empire pumps out propaganda to support a rigged system, or the overwhelming majority of our country who want to live in a decent, fair, diverse and prosperous society. You know whose side you're on. A Labour government will be on your side as well. Together, together we can pull down a corrupt system and build a fairer country that genuinely does care for all. And we have something that the Rupert Murdochs, the Mike Ashleys and the Boris Johnsons of this world don't have. We have people, hundreds of thousands of people in every part of our country who will make this the biggest people-powered election campaign in the history of this country. <laughs> we, we are young, we are old, we are black, we are white, we're straight, we're gay, we're women, we're men, we're people, of all faiths and none. We're from the North, we're from the South, we're from Scotland, we're from Wales, we're from every part of this country. And when Labour wins, 
The nurse wins, the pensioner wins, the student wins, the office worker wins, the engineer wins. We all win. Boris Johnson. I knew you'd sit down as soon as I mentioned the name. <laughs> Boris Johnson thought he was being smart, holding this election in a dark and cold December. He thinks you won't go out to vote. He thinks you won't go out to campaign. Well, I say this to him. Labour will be out there in every city every town and every village with the biggest and most confident campaign that our country has ever, ever seen. <laughs> bringing, bringing a message, a message of hope and change to every country and every community that makes up Britain. Even if the rivers freeze over, we're going out to bring real change for the many, not the few. And all we need, all we need on those cold streets as we walk down them is the thought of removing Boris Johnson's Conservatives from government and the chance to rebuild and transform our country. This is the most radical and exciting plan for real change ever put before the British electorate. Friends, the future is ours to make together. It is now time for real change. Thank you.